If you're not already in love with Canoe's pickup, I am willing to bet you will be by the time this video is over. Look, that's a bold statement, but let me get right to the point here. The Canoe pickup, in our opinion, is the coolest, most exciting, and obtainable EV we've covered in a long, long time. Yeah, we love it, and we just can't wait for this thing to be real. What's up, motorheads, and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza. So, Canoe's lifestyle vehicle gets most of the love, and yeah, look, that makes sense. It'll be available before the truck for sure, and honestly, it fits more people's lifestyle than the pickup. And that's true, but there's just something about the truck that somehow makes it, I don't know, super desirable? But how real is this thing? Yep, so the automotive landscape is littered with cool designs and great ideas, but getting those to market is a whole other thing entirely. Well, I think we're a big, big step closer to this reality, and that's thanks in part to none other than the US Army. So back in July, the Army went to Canoe to see if they could score an EV for them to test out. You see, the Army's getting real about EVs, and that's for good reason. Beyond the fact that it's just, well, sort of the right thing to do, the Army uses a pretty insane amount of oil. I mean, the US military is the largest institutional consumer of petroleum fuel products globally, using over 4.2 billion gallons a year. That's more than all the Great Lakes combined. All right, I made that up. I had you for a sec though, right? Anyway, those 4.2 billion gallons come in at over $9 billion, which yeah, look, might end up being a tiny fraction of the military's overall budget, but hey, I'm sure that 9 billion could be spent better elsewhere. That's not to mention that delivering fuel to some of the remote operations can end up costing the taxpayer over $1,000 a gallon. And here I thought LA was bad, right? And then there's the logistics and fuel convoys suck. They're super vulnerable to attack. And between 2003 and 2007, roughly one in eight casualties in Iraq came from protecting these convoys. So yeah, there's just plenty of reason for the military to get serious about electric. All right, so about the pickup or more specifically this army style pickup, what exactly is it, you ask? So it's classified as an LTV, otherwise known as a light tactical vehicle, and yes, it's obviously a modified version of what we hope is Canoe's pickup. As with the standard pickup, it shares its front end with the lifestyle vehicle, and according to Canoe, the LTV even uses carbon Kevlar to beef up the truck while reducing weight. And then there's the fact that this fella can pretty easily be converted from a pickup to a flatbed truck or a cargo vehicle or some other configuration, which is sort of a big, big deal when it comes to the military. Being able to make real adjustments to this thing out in the field could be a bit of a game changer. And personally, I'm excited to see all the different ways this thing can be used. All right, so let's talk some power. So on Canoe's website, if you take a look at the pickup, they say that they're targeting 500 plus horsepower. And here with the Army version, it looks like we're talking about 600 horsepower from a pair of motors, one up front, one in the back. As you suspect, that gives this thing all wheel drive, which is pretty critical, obviously. There's also a race suspension, air spray, and 32 inch all-terrain tires and then there's this modular attachment setup that makes it pretty easy to install all kinds of accessories like racks storage boxes ramps along with all kinds of tactical systems and I don't know maybe even some small artillery and then there's range and there's not a ton of info specifically about the army version but the consumer version of this truck should be able to have about 200 plus miles ago as you can imagine though, with big off-road tires and lots of bolt-on equipment, expect the real world range to take a bit of a hit here. But maybe that's not all that important. And going back to the big, big issue of moving fuel to hard to get to places, yeah, look, not only is it very, very expensive, but it's super dangerous. Could this all be replaced with some big time battery banks along with massive portable solar panels? I mean, once the battery banks are in place, you're literally able to generate an endless amount of power from that giant burning ball in the sky. And I'll admit, I haven't really looked into the practicality of this, but conceptually, it seems to make a lot of sense, right? So this is all good news. Sure, and I'm glad the military is at the very least exploring EVs, but this also shows us that Canoe has been doing some serious work and have been developing the truck. I mean, is it possible? Could we actually be on schedule when it comes to this pickup? So I've said this plenty and I'll say it again. This thing has home run written like all over it. I mean, don't get me wrong. 
The lifestyle vehicle is great and all, but it's also not going to be for everybody. And I might be going out on a bit of a limb here, but I could actually see the pickup outselling the van by a decent chunk. I mean, think about it. We just love our trucks here, especially if you live in a flyover state like I do. They're everywhere. And right now, yeah, we have a few electric trucks to choose from, but they're all like super crazy expensive. And don't get me started on the F-150 Lightning. Yeah, like it's a great truck, but the one you want is like well over 80 grand. And that's where Canoe comes in. If they can get this to market and keep the pricing in like the 40 to 50 grand range, they'll sign me up.